In today's Gospel reading, Jesus is in the wilderness. In wilderness, our human needs are rarely met. The harshness of the situation makes us fight for life. Our will is weakened and we are prone to make compromises for some comfort. The wilderness is not a romantic place, nor is it a faraway desert. Our wilderness can be within ourselves. When a problem arises and we are in need of direction or at a loss for proper guidance in life. We normally like to avoid such situations. But we must notice that it is the Spirit of God that drives Jesus into the wilderness. The Holy Spirit intensifies the need to work through the tough choices of life. The Holy Spirit leads us into the middle of tougher situations and insists that we deal with them head on. There is one danger with many of us. We do not take ourselves seriously. We do not listen to ourselves. In our mad rush of life and in all those noise and gestures we make, we forget to look deep into ourselves and see what really goes on deep within ourselves. We do not pay attention to our deeper feelings or emotions. Lent is an opportunity for personal growth and transformation. We cannot grow without confronting ourselves, our true selves, our emptiness and our inner struggles. The three temptations that Jesus faced are about our inner motives and the kind of values we cherish. Jesus refuses to use his power to pursue personal glory and popularity. He could surely jump from the pinnacle of the temple without hurting himself, but he is not an exhibitionist. He does not believe in making a show of himself. He does not want to prove himself. He would not take the shortcuts to power, but will work patiently in his way for the blessing of the whole humanity. The temptation story of Jesus brings out the deeper conflicts and struggles that we all have. We are invited to take this battle within ourselves seriously, confronting our very selves seriously during this Lent. But we like to avoid such engagement with our real self. In fact, we are often so eager to move into the reality of the promise of new life that we would like to skip Lent and experience Easter as quickly as possible. If only we could jump over the rest of the season, then we could move into the goodness of life itself and get on with the promise of abundance. This refrain of if and then is repeated in our gospel story today. If you are the son of God, then the challenge repeats itself over and over again. As human beings, we are often caught in these games of if only, then. If only I had done this or that, then I would have been in a different place now. If only I made a different choice in the past, I would have been more happier now. It is a common and human thing to wander in this path of regret, looking back and wondering aloud about what would happen if only we did things differently. At the beginning of Lent, this story of Jesus' experience in the wilderness leads me to reflect on two issues. First, coming to terms with lost possibilities. And secondly, recognizing the limitations 
of a human power and control. In some ways, the first concern is the opposite of what we experience in the Jesus, who turns down future possibilities that are offered to him. In the story, it is clear that Jesus is walking away from one kind of life in favor of another. It does not appear from this story that Jesus has any regrets about the path that he chooses. However, for human beings, making such decisions sometimes comes with an equally powerful wondering about what would have happened had we followed a different path or made a different choice. We need to recognize the grief we sometimes feel about the path we did not take. We might spend incredible energy during our lives examining the choices we made and living with the regrets of our lives. These lost opportunities are difficult to name and to grieve for, in part because they are so hard to see and know. We are fearful of making new choices, thus remaining stuck in our lives because of a limited vision and imagination. Whether it is the loss of a potential relationship, a friendship, a job or a life, we need to have the courage to name, grieve and let go of the paths not taken in our lives. Grieving and letting go of the regrets enables us to look inwardly at our soul and turn toward God and toward those whom we love. The second issue that arises from this story is found in the human struggle to accept our limitations and to discern how to balance issues of power and control. It strikes me that in this passage, Jesus' ability and willingness to let go of supernatural power and control and to live within the boundaries of human life and reality help us to reflect on our own lives. Lent might be a time to consciously relinquish our illusion of power and control. To be human means to honestly face our limitations and to recognize that we are not God. I was reminded recently in a seminar that one of the central pastoral issues for all caregivers is the struggle to assist people in the process of coming to terms with the realities of their human limitations. We are not totally in control of all that is around us, no matter what our position in life is. Human limitation is actually a gift of God's creation and one with which many of us have to str struggle and wrestle. As we deal with our regrets in life, the recognition that the choices we make are always made in the context of human limitations can guide us in our journey ahead. We all have to make choices in life. I'm not suggesting that if you are very good believers, we will always make right choices. I do not think I have got all my choices right. We have to make daily choices in a difficult world and in complex situations. We are humans with limitations and often we have limitations in our surroundings and situations. We cannot always tell if we made the right choice, but if we follow Jesus, we would try to make sure that our choices are not just governed by fear and selfishness. Grieving and letting go of the regrets can be one part of our London exercise. Another part 
could be an increased recognition that we are not God. We have limitations as humans. But God is right there in the midst of our struggles and pains, helping us to let go our regrets about lost possibilities and enabling us to move on with renewed power and hope. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.